Welcome at the Technische Universität München, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. My name is Birgit Vogelhäuser and I'm full professor and director of the Institute of Automation and Information System. Today I would like to give you a short introduction what we are doing in our research and in education. We are looking for improving mechanical engineering and automation using informatic methods. Our mission is to improve development and operation of such systems. It is mechanical systems as well as automation. If you have a look at a closer idea of what we are doing, we have four research foci. The one is model-driven development. The other one, reconfiguration of distributed systems, which is in a way a subsystem. We have quality management and safety aspects. And last but not least, usability engineering. Let's start with model-driven engineering. In short, MDE. To reduce downtime and startup time in machine and plant automation, as well as time to market, model-based design has become more and more important instead of writing code. In 2003, we presented the first prototype of a UML editor. What is UML? UML is the abbreviation for Unified Modeling Language, which is a graphical approach for an MDE coming from informatics and adapted to automation and control software. As you can see here, this approach is now integrated into a market-leading automation environment. The model is the code. For example, breakpoints may be set in the model. Currently, we are working on the next steps, round-trip engineering and cross-discipline modeling. With the next research focus, reconfigurable distributed control systems, we are working on intelligent modular automated systems. As one technology, we use software agents, which help us to couple different proprietary automation systems and are part of this week's assignment later on. Regarding the research field usability, we work on two main subjects. Related to machines and plants, we design appropriate human-machine interfaces by using smart technologies in automation and evaluate our model-based approaches empirically as mentioned before. To decrease downtime, we analyze historical alarm locks from industrial plants in process industry to detect patterns and forecast critical plant study and in that way to avoid those study. I hope now you have a first impression what we are doing at the Chair of Automation and Information Systems and we'll have a look in the weekly assignment in more detail. Welcome to our weekly assignment on agents and control. We want to discuss about how to implement software agents to realize intelligent control software design. As an application scenario, we have a look at a plant with a liquid and we'll see later on this is a yogurt production plant and this liquid tank has a level control. In case of a failure of this um, level switch, we have somehow to realize that the liquid will stop even if the sensor fails. As you can see, we now realize the failure of the sensor by just disconnecting the electrical wire. And you will see also that the liquid is not anymore filled in. How does that work? We instead calculate the inf um, inflow and outflow of the water and by that we can replace by a very simple model the liquid sensor with a certain unsecurity. What has this to do with an agent? Well, it's easy. An agent, as per definition, is a technical agent, an encapsulated hardware software entity with specific objectives. An agent endeavors to reach these objectives through its autonomous behavior in interacting with its environment and with other agents. This is due to the VDE standard. It's a German standard from the Association of Engineers and it is in this standard available. 
Well, what does an agent consist of? We have four different parts. We start on the left hand and go this direction. On the left hand, you see there is a diagnosis module which realizes there is a phasure. There is a fault in the sensor. The sensor is disconnected. The next one is a knowledge base. The knowledge base knows that by calculating the inflow and the outflow, you can calculate the level haze. And if we know that, we have to somehow implement that on a PLC or on another control component. And we have to care about whether this deals with real-time requirements and when, if you look for a multiprocessor system or real-time system, the task will be scheduled in time. The next module, the control module, will be necessary to make sure that the inflow is stopped, that the liquid will not be too high uh, above the liquid switch. So we have incoming measures, these are the sensors, and outgoing set values, for example, valves. We have also interaction with other agents and we can share statues and alarm messages. All this is standardized by this committee I'm head of. Let's have a closer look and sum, uh, summarize the characteristics of an agent. We have the communication, which is essential. We have the autonomy of the agent and we have also the adaptation. The agent is able to adapt to his uh, environment. How does it come into the context of cyber physical production systems or Industry 4.0? Well, from our point of view, agents are an essential part of such cyber physical systems to allow us to make them more intelligent, more adaptable. In Germany, we have these four subsections categorizing Industry 4.0. On the one hand, it's the data processing for the human, the communication, and data consistency and also the architecture models and reference architecture where companies and scientists work together. But this is not the focus of our lecture this week. This is the focus. So we try to implement intelligent products and production units. How can we do this? By having inherent capabilities. And here are agents required. By description of product and operating resources in this case, ontologies. We will not discuss ontologies in depth, but we can imagine an ontology as a joint vocabulary of all of us. What we want to reach is flexible production units and adaptable production units, and we try to adapt those to structural changes like malfunctions. The fourth one is data analysis. To improve operation of plants, we have to learn somehow how the plant behaves by analyzing data and also to forecast process quality. We try to demonstrate that in our open demonstrator, My Yogurt. What is the target? You see there are different colleagues from myself uh, in Munich together with uh, Christian Dietrich in Magdeburg and also the guys from Stuttgart, Peter Göhner and Michael Weirich. We try to simulate or produce a yogurt in different places, different university institutes. And we join our experience, for example, on 40 sensors. We saw in the video a sensor which was faulty by induction because we disconnected the line. But there are a lot of faults in such a plant which are typical for a typical sensor, for a type of sensor from a specific supplier. Therefore, we try to join this data above and through all the different plants. Now, I would like to show you human machine interfaces and therefore I start the video. You see again the tank and on the other hand, we have a super pound um, figure from the control room. And you can see that individually, the operator can now try to uh, configure his perfect interface. In this case, we have a maintenance issue and it is about a temperature control. So you see the blue devices in the background. These are engineering data and really implemented engineering 3D pictures. On the other hand, you see now from the control room the trends of the temperature. So the maintenance people have all necessary information available, really at shop floor, so that they can try to troubleshoot in a better way. Well, what is this now 
in the context of a ad adaptable production plant using agents. We have a very similar, let's say, picture of our plant and you see these Ludo figures which represent the different parts of the plant, for example, the belt or the switch. And they have an information model which is integrated in those agents. You see the different filling stations here for dark and for white chocolate and they are interacting by communicating with each other. On the other hand, you can see the connection to the other plants from Magdeburg and from Stuttgart. We have a cloud-based information basis. In the cloud, all agents which are available, all production plants, all parts of a production plant, if this is necessary, are registered here. And we have a so-called director facilitator where each of these agents has to tell us which functionality his plant can deliver. Additionally, we have the message transportation systems, short MTS, where we can see how the communication between those agents is managed and how it is possible. So an agent has abilities or let's say has uh, services and functionalities and knows exactly how he can communicate with the others. Let's have a look at the plant again. We'll see now how the bottles are passed through the plant. You see the switches and the bottles are now going to be filled at the filling stations left and right. We have a closer look at the left one, which is not now with dark and white chocolate, but now with, you will see it later, red and blue balls. Unfortunately, we don't use yogurt, but water. And in this case, we just use the balls. Okay, what does it help now if we implement agents? And how do we implement them? We already discussed that agents are able to communicate with the cloud by using these different messages and implementing their functionality. But we can do it also on a platform like a PLC in IEC 61131, for example, or as our colleagues in Stuttgart prefer it on Jade and on a PC-based structure, or our colleagues in Magdeburg, they prefer C or C Sharp and microprocessors. So, Let's say the summary from all of this, we are able to implement the strategy, the concept and the startup and uh, starter kit agent on the different platforms which are necessary. Also, different customers, different companies did that on their, for example, Linux real-time system. Because we want today focus on the communication sequence, we have a closer look how this works. The communication sequence is now displayed as a sequence diagram, which is part of the unified modeling language. We will discuss that in depth now. We have the customer agent trying to order the new yogurt by a customer order. The order is sent to the provider agent, which is the agent representing the entire production plant. Because he knows that there is dark and white chocolate, he will ask those subcomponents whether they are able and prepared to produce such a yogurt with white and black chocolates by sending a message requesting the status and getting an answer with the status, which is at the moment the case. But it's not only in the case of ordering, distribution and order confirmation. We can also use these messages by uh, a faulty situation for event handling for errors and disturbances. This is highlighted in the orange section. So if, for example, the dark chocolate agent has a problem and detects a disturbance, he sends a message to the provider agent and the whole plant has to decide how to react, whether there is a reconfiguration possible or not. Maybe the white chocolate agent could take over also the dark chocolate balls in his process. As said, we want to go in more into more depth. We have again this provider agent and the dark chocolate agent on the right hand side. And we have to have a look at the symbols. This is a lifeline which shows that this component is available. And we highlight it with such a box if it is really active. We have messages and answers sent from the one or the other to the other. So starting, we have to detect that the time is running from top to down, which is a little bit maybe confusing. 
So we start with our communication. Our provider agents want to request the status from the dark chocolate agent. Well, there will be an internal function call checking what function and what status is available, maybe a second one to another sub module or sub device. And then we send back the status saying, well, it is okay or not. This is the basic principle of the sequence diagram. Now your task is to turn this into a C program. So we have again to get a little bit more into depth. So we send on the one hand functions and get back with function and arguments. And it should be done in C. We all hope that C is already available from your bachelor study. We look from the perspective of the dark chocolate agent onto the system. This is what you have to implement later. And we want to ask the get status about the dark chocolate agent. We do this with the struct. This is prepared. And depending on the message, we have to put in the different data into the struct. Now we ask the get status. So the dark chocolate agent has to check his status and give the answer again with sending a message to the provider agent. And in this case, the report status is okay. Your assignment now is to put this interaction into a C program. So there is already a pattern given. So you have to do the green lines and fill in what is necessary to be done after the status request, what is to be done after the send and what is to be done to get the internal status. To make it a little bit more clear in the whole uh, environment, you see we have this production agent interacting with the agent platform. This would be, for example, your plant. And this is the large plant we saw in the film. So what you should you do? The production agent is asking for the status. It's a envelope as a symbol is sent to the agent platform. Afterward, the agent platform sends it to the different agents, also to your agent. You and your plant have to check what is in your plant the status. So you have to maybe ask all the subcomponents, put it together and give the information back to the agent platform. So we see our plant is okay, but your plant is unfortunately 40. So we send back an error message. You have to implement this and compose it as a status report. How can you do it? You have to get access to our e-learning platform. It's called PIT. And please use this QR code or this link to get access to this e-learning platform. You will see a survey page and on the left hand side, topic agent, which is what we exactly did during the whole lecture. And you want to solve a problem. So you have to push the solve a problem button. Let's summarize and have a short outlook on agents in automation. We discussed about what is an agent remembering the specification of the agents group in the German VDI, we can summarize that an agent has autonomy, communication and knowledge. Being a technical agent, we have a software or a hardware agent trying to solve a problem by having goals and fulfilling these goals by his own knowledge using the diagnosis, the control module, the knowledge module and also the panel planning module. What is the difference between an agent and a controller? This is not a simple answer, but to give you an idea, a controller has a set point, an agent has a goal. So agents are much more complex than controllers and can handle also problems which occur during runtime, which are not engineered before runtime, which is normal the case for controllers. How do agents communicate? We had a lot of discussion about that with the sequence diagram and with the message transportation system in the MyYogurt example. So we have messages sent around between those agents. But what is the real challenge? Why does not everybody use agents in automation? Well, to tell you the truth, it's dependability and real time. Real time means the agents have to come to a conclusion in a certain time. For example, two cycles of a programmable logical controller, which may be 20 milliseconds. Not much time left for discussion. 
So this is the real challenge and we can solve it and we did it already in real control as we um, saw it in the yogurt plant. And the other thing I said is dependability. We have to make sure that the agent does not do anything which destroys the plant by acting, concluding things during runtime and having a proposal which is not adequate for the process. At the end, I can only say thank you for your attention and hope you have a lot of fun during your assignment and hopefully you learn a lot and we look forward to find all your solutions in our pit.